As an electrician, how are you supposed to price jobs? Like what methods do you use? Do you like just add a little bit of margin, figure out how much things cost? Do you charge an hourly rate? Do you charge by the square foot? Let's break into it. Now, before we get started, we offer continuing education. Yes, we're approved in a whole bunch of different states. You can go to electricianu.com, click on the little bar on the right, go to continuing education, and we have a bunch of different states. We have more states that we're adding, so if you don't see your state, soon enough, I promise we will have it. We're spending all of 2022 pretty much trying to make sure that we're in as many states as possible, but it's dope. You just get to watch videos of me doing this. Then we have ground, just says the earth and you get credit for it. So check the link out below, hope to see you in class. What's going on everybody? I'm Dustin Selzer with Electrician U and uh, this whole topic, I get tons of people uh, over the years that, that email me and they're like, I'm going out on my own, I don't know how to price things or I'm trying to do side work and I shouldn't be, but I'm trying to figure out how to charge stuff. I've had apprentices that used to work for me figure out like, you know, same thing. What do I even charge to do any of this stuff? So let's break into it a little bit. So there's a couple of different methodologies that you can go by and there's so many different segments of our trade that there's a bunch of different ways that people come up with pricing and I've worked for several different companies. Every single one of them works a little bit differently because each one of them does a different type of work. So while one pricing method may work for a small service company, um, a large service company is gonna be very different or a new construction company that specializes in commercial is gonna do something um, way differently than anybody doing anything in service, but especially for somebody that's doing, you know, like uh, track homes or uh, multifamily stuff or doing remodels or, you know, there's just a lot of things to consider. So so the, the way that I'm going to split this up um, is I'm going to talk about five different methods. I'm not really going to go specifically like if you're doing new construction, these are your methods. And if you're doing, you know, service, these are your methods. I'm just going to kind of talk about all of them. Um, so the first one to, to think about is something called time and material. Usually time and material is going to be uh, a method that you're gonna use if you're running into a situation where you don't really know how long something's gonna take and it could potentially be a price or it could be it get, get extrapolated out to be a crazier price because you just don't know what you're getting into. So uh, time and material I will usually use for work where there's a lot of troubleshooting, a lot of unknowns, probably uh, some sort of remodel environment where it's like, look, this could be a certain thing, but once we open all of this stuff up, it could be this. And so the best way for me to give you kind of accurate spending is to just go time and material. So I'll tell you what my hourly wage is, say it's 150 an hour, and uh, all the materials I buy, I'm gonna turn in receipts from you, I'm gonna add margin because that's my policy as a company, it's a way to ensure profit by saying, you know, like we spent $3,000 in material, so I'm gonna add 30% or I'm gonna add 50% or 100%, whatever you want your margin to be. So the time it takes me to go procure all these materials and to try to order things, and especially now with all the shortages that we're dealing with, like you could spend a considerable amount of time and your time is worth money. So you shouldn't just be giving time away for free um, you're actually doing work, you're going and driving around, it's costing you gas, it's costing you, uh, you know, like insurance, it's costing you time, hours that you should be getting paid and that you could otherwise be getting paid out on a job site swinging hammers, you know, if, if you're actually going out and doing work. So time and material is basically just, this is the amount of time that I think it's gonna take but I don't really know. So what I would rather do is just pick an hourly wage and I'll say that you know maybe every eight hours, every day, every like week, whatever the time is, I'm gonna let you know that I've spent this much time at my hourly wage so you can kind of keep track of it as I'm going. And these are the materials that I've spent with my markup on them. That is time and material and a lot of people use time and material. Um, but most people are not doing time and material all the time. Again, it's usually just environments where it's kind of just a moving target and the price could change quite a bit. The second method is called cost 
plus. So cost plus is not something just in the trades, but uh, cost plus is I'm gonna figure out the totality of what I think this is going to cost to do this job, and I'm going to add a certain percentage to that um, for the margin, for the profit that I would like to make on top of the cost. So less often you're gonna use this in an unknown environment. A lot of times people will price this off of a known uh, set of hours or a known uh, task that they have in front of them. Uh, a lot of new construction jobs are done this way. Um, it, they don't really call it cost plus, but it is figuring out it's going to take me X amount of crews to do this over X amount of hours. It's going to cost, you know, Y materials. So I'm going to come up with Z profit that I want to add to the end of what I think this is going to cost me. The next method that a lot of people use when doing new construction specifically is to do square foot pricing. So I don't personally use this method, but I do use it to kind of check my numbers because I know other people do use this method. So when I'm going and doing a bid on a job, uh, the, the cost in the area that, that the jobs you're getting versus the jobs you're losing, you'll be able to monitor this over time, but based off of other bids that you might have uh, been privy to that you see what you know other jobs are being done, you can kind of over time get the idea of in your area what uh, residential homes are going for per square foot. So um, for a large scale custom home, it could be $10 a square foot with expensive materials going on. Um, it could be in commercial that it's $20 a square foot. Cost per square foot, if you had like a 1500 square foot house and you were charging $10 a square foot, that would be $15,000 to wire that house. And you could break that up into separate draws. So a lot of people, when they first start out, they'll do like I want half up front and half when the job's finished. Or some other people might go into thirds. They might say like, I want a third up front, I want a third when I finish my rough-in and get a rough-in inspection passed, and then I want another third at the completion of the job. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do it. Not everybody does it the same way, and it needs to be that way. So a lot of people think, well, oh my God, you're charging $125 an hour, you're an electrician. This company over here is charging $92 an hour. And it's like, yeah, but they're probably adding 100% markup on their materials. You know, so like nobody prices the same. You have to figure out what your pricing is, and really, we can talk about this in a, in a different video, um, but you need to figure out what it costs for you to be in business because you don't wanna just be hemorrhaging money and not making enough to pay all of your bills. So you need to know, what does it actually cost me an hour to be in business? What is you know, all of the, the uniform cleaning and the overhead, the, the payments on my company vehicles, the insurance on my vehicles, the people's salaries, the wages, everything that you spend, um, on your company, you need to add all of that up and figure out, you know, over a year, what does it actually cost me? And then how do I break that into an hourly wage? How do I break that down to monthly? How do I break it down to weekly, you know, daily, hourly? Um, and you need to figure out what your actual cost is to be able to come up with your hourly wage. But just know, lots of people have different pricing and for a workplace to be competitive, it needs to be that way. If everybody's charging the same price, you see that a lot in like vet clinics, uh, veterinary offices, it's super competitive and everybody has to charge a certain amount or else you will not get work. It's not the case with construction. There's so much construction going on and people are in such demand right now that you can get away charging whatever you want. And whenever somebody says yes, I mean, you, you price it to what people say yes to, right? So a lot of times you might um, price things higher than because you don't want the job. That is something that I've done a lot. I have, uh, I've always been the cheap guy, right? And if, when I first started out, I was like, oh, I want every job. I wanna make sure that I'm getting all these customers. And then you're breaking your back and you're barely making any profit. And you should be charging more to kind of stave off some of that work. So then I've raised my prices uh, too much. I've gotten to the point where it's like, all right, I'm just gonna double, triple everything, <laughs> you know, let's see what happens. And you still get yeses in the door, but you find a lot more people start to just say no and go elsewhere. So there's a kind of a middle point when you're figuring out your wage and what you should charge is what am I getting? What's my worth? How many people want me to be working? And you raise your prices to a certain point where 
Uh, about you know half the calls that you're getting, people are, are good with your pricing and the other half, people aren't good with it. That's kind of the sweet spot it seems because then you're able to pick the kind of work you want to do rather than having to just do everything that comes in the door. And I would rather work less and make more per job just so that I'm like at ease and I'm not tearing my mind apart trying to do all of this work. So that's just my methodology, but a small company could probably get away with that, whereas a large company probably can't. A large company needs to be a lot more solid with the prices that they're charging and they need to be universal across the board. They have margins that they have to figure out and market share actually means a lot to them. So they can get away charging less to get more volume of work to keep more people working. Whereas a small company, they don't really have that much overhead to charge so they can charge more per hour and do less work. So there's a little bit of, uh, of trying to figure out kind of like where you're at on the spectrum of all of that. The next thing that I've noticed people do price wise is they charge by the task. And this is what I actually started doing when I started doing my own side work illegally. Don't do side work. We'll do another video coming up. Uh, you shouldn't be doing side work, but we all do side work. So skipping over that at that point, when I was doing illegal side work, I was charging by the task. So if I had sconces that somebody wanted hung, I would charge a certain dollar amount. I would charge like 60 bucks to hang a light and then if i had to get a taller ladder and it was like 12 feet or 14 feet or something like that and i had to figure in the the, the cost of like what it's going to cost them to go buy a ladder and do it or rent a ladder and do it themselves um, versus the extra time it's going to take me to have this big ladder and have to move all of their stuff around or if it's a 16 foot a-frame ladder and you have to have two people to get that thing off your truck and come in and you know there's a lot of things that you figure out these specific tasks would actually cost you a certain amount of money so you can just charge by the tasks so some people will charge um, $100 to, to hang a chandelier. They might charge $200 to uh, hang a, a ceiling fan. And then if it's a ceiling fan with an eight foot rod that's got a programmable remote and it's got you know 60 inch blades, they might charge something different, but they can figure out by the task what each thing is, uh, is able to be charged. So replacing a receptacle that has less than 50 feet of wire coming off of something, you know, like that could be a certain price. Or if it's over 50 feet to up to 200 feet, could, because you're figuring out how much material is it gonna cost to, to, to do this? And then how much money extra do I want to just make on this for it to be worth my time to do it? So uh, that's one thing is just by the task that people charge. Then the last one to talk about is an estimating program or estimating software. There's a lot of companies out there that use estimating software. Most of the time you have to pay to use them. And then there's some kind of hybrid software out there that's like scheduling and fleet maintenance stuff. Service Titan is one. Field Pulse is another one. Uh, house call pros one where they do a whole bunch of things but part of the the software is that it allows you to build invoices and send invoices and take payment and all of that stuff so a lot of times they'll have like line items inside of them where you can pre-program your pricing for certain tasks and things like that you can have an hourly wage you can do a lot of these things within software um, usually larger companies are using software because they want to be as accurate as possible they want to have margin that's very specific on very specific things. You can program in the amount of time you think it, it takes to replace one receptacle. And you can add to that the cost of a receptacle and you can have all these values already figured out in a software so that you can hire somebody to just come in that you know may have been an electrician in the past. Some master electricians will just go to work for some of these larger companies and they will just do estimating for this company. And so they will open up a computer, they've been in the field, they know how long things take, they know what materials cost and things like that. They're, so they're really, really good at figuring out what job costing is all about. And so they will use estimating programs. I don't recommend anybody go out there and spend a whole crap load of money getting an estimating software. I think Microsoft Excel or uh, Google Sheets, slides, sheets, docs, sheets. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, works just fine for most people until you start hiring and you need to be a little bit more precise. You find that you're like losing money in places and you need to start kind of tightening things up. That's where I would say start getting some uh, estimating software, but usually that's for the larger companies. Now, so we've hit the five different kind of methodologies in how people bid. Uh, one other thing, well, two other things. There's two things to consider when you're pricing things out. I think it's a good idea if you're doing service work, not necessarily new construction, 
but service work, uh, you're going to be going out to a job, you're probably gonna get paid immediately right then and there and leave. And you don't mess with that customer again until you know they call again in the future. But I think for a service company, it's really important to charge a trip charge. You can give away you know, free estimates if you want to, you don't have to. Some companies call, uh, or some customers will call and be like, this company over here charges $99 to come and do a service call or just to do an estimate. It's like, well, they can do that. I mean, if they have lots of work and they're getting tons of work and they got a great reputation, people will pay $100 to have somebody come out and do an estimate, you know? And that usually gets applied to the job if they accept the job, that's okay. That's, that's not wrong to do, it's just the way that they do things. Some people like to give away free estimates and they put that right immediately in advertisement or on their, you know, their website, free estimates. Um, and that works too, that gets a lot of people in the door, but they might have a higher hourly wage or something like that. A lot of service companies though, they will charge a trip charge. So every trip that I have to take out to your job and do something, I'm going to charge a flat rate trip charge that covers any kind of gas, it covers any kind of time uh, that has been taken to, to drive out to a, a spot because even doing estimates, it takes time and it takes gas, you got the insurance, you got all of these other things that you're not collecting any money to go out and do this estimate and the customer might say no and go hire somebody else. So it's understandable to charge a trip charge for every single trip because a lot of the jobs you will get, a lot of the jobs you won't get, some of the jobs you uh, have to take multiple trips for and some of them that you don't and so kind of overall it ends up balancing out to be profitable to do that. So usually what I do is I charge a $50 trip charge, I charge $150 or $200 an hour, kind of depends on the situation and what it is. That's just pricing for me by myself, no overhead, no big company. That's just what I want to make. So for me, it's automatically $200 for me to show up at your door. And a lot of people don't want to pay that, but so many people want to pay that that I need to charge more because it's just too much. I can't handle the volume by myself. And I don't want to have to go hire a bunch of people. So if I just raise my rates and go with a higher price, I'm still gonna have a wait list of people, but I get to pick the jobs that I want and I get to make more money just staying small and doing things like I'm doing them. So that is the trip charge. The other thing to consider is the minimums. So if you, you know, if you're looking through all these different options that we just talked about, trying to figure out what you want your pricing to be, I would think for a second, what is the minimum amount of money that's worth my time to show up at a job to do something? For me, I don't get out of bed to go, I don't care if it's to reset a GFCI, I don't care if it's, you know, I'm just literally like taking a broken switch out of a wall and putting a new one in. For me to come to your house and spend my lifetime that I don't get back ever again to work, to do any amount of work for you at all whatsoever, it's a minimum of $200 for me to show up. $200, it's like, all right, cool. that basically bought me groceries for the week. You know, like it, that's worth my time. Some people's threshold for that is way lower. Some people are like, dude, for 50 bucks, like I need 50 bucks today. So 50 bucks is, is what you think your minimum is. But I think really having, looking at things from that side of the lens uh, it is really important. And one last note, make sure what you're charging, you're actually worth. So in all of this where I'm like, oh yeah, you can add material or margin over here and you can add all this and make all of this. If you know 100% that you're not as good as other companies at doing whatever the thing is that you're trying to do, like maybe you're best at a small new construction, but you're trying to dip your foot in the commercial service world. You should not charge what other big companies that only specialize in commercial service do you shouldn't be more expensive than them. You can be, I mean, you're just gonna be found out that you're not very good at something. So I would kind of try to keep that in perspective. Like what do I actually think that I'm worth? And then as you're getting more experience, raising your prices makes sense. Um, it's always it's always easier to, to come down from your pricing. It's always uh, really hard to go up from a price that you've already given to somebody. So don't ever like undercut yourself. Don't ever charge too little to where it's not worth your time and you're you know, wasting all this money. Anybody that's like, oh, I got six houses that I want you to wire and if you give me a good price on this one, they're never gonna call you again. They're gonna get that price out of you for that first one and then when you're done, they're gonna go to the next person. They're gonna go 
to some other electrician and they're gonna have that same conversation and they're gonna get them to undercut the pricing and they're gonna do that again. Most of the times they don't have all these jobs or they might have all these jobs but they know in the back of their mind they're probably like way off and they're not even gonna do them. They're just telling you that to get a cheap price. Don't lower your prices if you don't have to. I understand when you're very first starting out, when you are very, very, very first starting out, you kinda can't be picky, right? Phones, you need the phones to ring, you need jobs, you need to do that. That makes sense. Once you get six months under your belt, a year under your belt of running a company and get figuring all this stuff out, and you get busier and you kind of got a pipeline of work for the next couple of months, that's when you need to really start having a serious thought about your pricing and, and um, making sure that you're, you're okay, you're comfortable with a customer hanging up on you because they don't like your pricing. You need to be able to stand firmly by your pricing, feel like, yes, I am worth what I'm charging or I have enough work coming in that I don't give a shit if this person says no because I've got 10 other bids coming in that I gotta finish this week. Doesn't matter. That's the sweet spot. That's that spot that you wanna be in because we're in this to be profitable. We're not in this to do favors for people. I don't care that your breaker's tripping. You know, if you're a sweet old lady and your breaker's tripping, you're out in the middle of the wilderness or something like that, like, yeah, I mean, I. I'm guilty of like just trying to help people out from time to time, especially elderly. There's a soft spot in my heart that I, I just care because a lot of people don't, I don't know. But other than those situations where I feel in my heart or you know they've done a favor for me or something like that, other than that, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like I'm in this to make money. Everything I do needs to make money and it needs to make more money than it costs because yes, I'm trying to make a profit on every single job, not trying to break even, I'm trying to grow and, and put money in the bank in savings. That's why I took the risk to go out on my own and make my own business out of this rather than just getting an hourly wage for 25 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour to be a journeyman at somebody else's company. That risk is worth the reward of making sure that you are making money, that you're saving, that you get extra money at the end of it. So. Uh, enough blabbing at you, sorry. I hope that provided enough value for any of you guys thinking about pricing and how to do all of that. Um, let me know if you have any questions, comments, if I missed anything, if there's different ways you do stuff, please leave them in the comments below. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one. Best can't use it and video.